Have you told your friends that you see ghosts? Oh, absolutely not. Gina Rodriguez returns in Not Dead Yet. I'm back, baby. Who is that? Oh, she's the obituary writer. And Brad Garrett joins the brilliant ensemble cast. Titan, Maverick, Titan of all Mavericks. These are all words used to describe me. Baby, I got you shook. Got you shook. Not Dead Yet. Season premiere tonight, 8 30, 7 30 Central on ABC and stream on Hulu. It's the Happy Families Podcast. We are so grateful that you have chosen to listen to the Happy Families Podcast today. Thank you for joining us. Every Friday on the podcast, we do a, a segment that we call I'll Do Better Tomorrow. For those of you who are new, and we have had so many new subscribers to the podcast, thank you for being here. Uh, The I'll Do Better Tomorrow segment is essentially Kylie and I reflecting on the week that was and trying to identify what went well or what didn't, or what we can learn from the week so that we can be more intentional as parents moving forward. Now, you're probably aware by now that it's been a pretty heavy couple of weeks in our home and in our family. Just before Kylie begins with her story, her I'll do better tomorrow. I wanted to reflect on something and just highlight. So I I shared a post on Facebook and Instagram last week uh, that shared the news of the tragic passing of our nephew. I checked with my family before I wrote it. I didn't want to write something that was not going to be approved of by them to post. And in fact, when I wrote it, I said, I don't just want you to say it's it's fine, post it. I want you to tell me that you need me to post it. I want you to encourage me to post it. It has to be that good and that important. And so when I shared the news, what I really wanted to do was focus not just on the, on the tragedy. Uh, anybody could do that, but I really wanted to focus on how we can help, what we can do in our families, what we can do with our loved ones to help them to know that they are loved and to help them to choose to talk to us rather than taking tragic and drastic actions. As a result of that post, more than 2.6 million people engaged with what I shared. More than 170,000 people reacted, more than 20,000 people commented, and more than 18,000 people shared the news. My family wanted me to make sure that you knew how much we appreciate the fact that not just were you touched by what I shared, but that you felt to act on it and to share it and to do something about making your relationships stronger. Thank you for honoring the message that we shared. And we, we so very much hope that it helped. The funeral for Logan will be today. Once this podcast drops, we'll be jumping in the car and heading off to be with family so that we can reflect on and memorialize his life. And normal podcast programming will resume on Monday. We need to talk about more than this, as important as this is. But Kylie, for today's I'll Do Better Tomorrow, I'd love for you to kick us off and share the the story or the experience that you've had this week that has helped you to be a better parent? After you posted on Tuesday, I got a phone call from one of my closest friends um, who was just devastated by the news. And she just wanted me to know that um, she really appreciated the courage it took for you to share what you shared, but that it had already made a difference in her life. Mm. Um, Over the last few months she's been really really struggling with one of her children and she said she read that post and she just knew no matter what was going on with them she needed her child to know that he was loved and she went into his room and she just grabbed him into a great big bear hug and just held him and she said he was so shocked because it's not something that they would normally do. Um, and she was able to talk to him and share with him what she'd read and just how important it was for him to know that in spite of how much challenge they're experiencing at the moment, that he was loved. Um, and it was a beautiful segue into a conversation we had at the dinner table with our children. Normally, when we sit around the dinner table, we usually share grateful things um, together and As we were talking about um, the experience um, and letting the children kind of share some feelings about what we've been experiencing, it was our little nine-year-old Emily who piped up and said, I don't really want to do grateful things tonight. I actually want to find out 
how you feel loved. And it just, it never ceases to amaze me how our little children are just so in tune. And so we had this opportunity as a family to just sit around and share the things that help us individually feel love. And as we did that, there was just this greater feeling of love in our home. And it was really beautiful. It's extraordinary the way tragic galvanizes love. And, um, and and that was that was a night that I think we'll always remember because of the way that she responded, the way that she recognised that we just need to affirm and reassure one another of our love and the irreversible and unconditional way that we need to love one another. I love that story. I hope that tonight as families sit around tables, rather than talking about grateful things, maybe they might share how they know that they're loved as well. Kylie, my I'll Do Better Tomorrow is something that builds on the legacy of Logan. As I spent time with my family in the immediate aftermath of his death, I spent some time on the New South Wales Central Coast, which is where they all are, where he died, where mum and dad live. And myself and my siblings all pretty much stayed at mum and dad's for a few nights and really spent some time involved in conversation and being together as a family. It was something that I was really grateful to be able to do. A really, really special time. A story was shared during that that I didn't know about Logan. And it was funny because as soon as I heard it, I realized that I'd heard it before. I'd recognized it, but I'd never joined the dots and put it all together. When I think in the moment, it's it's just who he was. It's just who he was. It's just how he was. Yeah. And, and here's how he was. I, my, my brother pointed it out. When somebody said, I love you, as the night wrapped up, he looked at them and said, nah, I love you, Tim. And he got a funny look. And my sister said, okay, I love you, Tim. And then Tim said, have you ever noticed, did you ever realize that whenever anybody said, I love you, Logan would, uh, would always correct it and ask for the name, ask for his name to be said. In fact, he was the one who always ran out the door and said, love you, Nan, or love you, Pop, or love you, Uncle Ja, or wh- whatever, love you, whoever it was. But he always said their name. And if they called out, love you, as he left, he would stop and say, nah, love you, Logan. And he would make them say his name. And when I came home, I sat down with you and the kids, and I said, I think that this is a beautiful legacy. I think that it is something that we can do in, not just in in order to honour the legacy of Logan, but maybe even to make our family feel closer and stronger. And for the last week or so, every time we've said, I love you, we've added the person's name to the end of the sentence. And I haven't realised until now just how much more beautiful that is and how much I love hearing my name at the end of that sentence. You've started saying it all the time. Instead of just, I love you, you've been saying, I love you, Justin. And There's something so beautiful and so powerful and so profound about that extra couple of syllables on the end of that sentence. It's interesting. The kids will always say, I love you, mummy, or I love you, mum. But since you shared that, the weight of hearing my name or my title at the end of that sentence has really hit me a lot more. Yeah, it's just beautiful. So that is our... I'll do better tomorrow. I hope that it's celebratory. I hope that it recognizes that in the very depths of tragedy and sorrow and grief, we can find beauty. We can find love. Uh, Maybe in wrapping up, I can share one of my favorite ideas. It came from a therapist that I was listening to a podcast on some months ago. And she just said joy. Her definition of joy Joy is found anywhere where there is something to be grateful for. And so as we farewell a beloved family member today, I feel beautiful gratitude, so much appreciation for these little lessons that we've had in our home this week as a result of him. And as a result of that, I believe that today, while we will sorrow, that we may feel solace because there is joy as we express and appreciate him for what he taught us. The Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Rulon. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. For more about making your family happier, 
you can visit our website, happyfamilies.com.au, or our Facebook page, Dr. Justin Coulson's Happy Families. But really, all you need to do is say I love you and add the person's name to the end of the sentence. Embrace them in a great big bear hug and talk to them about how you know you're loved and ask them how they know they're loved. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll be with you again on Monday.